They started making paste for their own consumption and now they're ready to take it to the world. Today we are in Gong to meet the founders of Tandu's Kitchen to listen to their journey. This is Founders Connect Africa. Hi, hi, how are you? Hi, I'm fine, thank you. Yes. And yourself? I'm okay. Welcome Very to Tanu's Kitchen. Oh, this is Tanu's yes, Kitchen. Yes, this is Tanu's Kitchen. Yes, I've heard a lot about you. Okay. I had to come and see it for myself. You're very welcome. Mm -hmm. So this is where all the action happens. Happens, uh -huh. yes. Uh -huh. So you just found me finishing uh -huh. sterilizing my bottles. Uh -huh. We have a few orders, so yeah, yeah. we have to sterilize. Yes. Then now, labeling. Oh. Yeah, so after sterilization, yeah. we do the labeling so the that label. now we can do the oh. manufacturing Good itself. Stuff. So basically, these are some of the of the paste that uh, you, you make. Yes, mm -hmm. yes, yes. Mm -hmm. What you're holding is the plain ginger, yeah. and yeah. that's what I'll make dawa for you okay. with. Then we have the ginger garlic. Oh, okay. Actually, ginger. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's very aromatic. Yeah. Then yeah. we have ginger garlic turmeric, which mm -hmm. is our fastest moving paste, actually. Okay. okay. It's our best seller. Yeah. Then we have the ginger turmeric. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. okay. So yeah. What are the benefits of this um the ginger, the the, the turmeric and the garlic? So most of the benefits actually co co correlate or something. They mm -hmm. Yeah, they go hand in hand. Yes. Yes. They are very good in moon boosters. Like now when we have COVID, yeah. it's very good at fighting flus and yeah. stuff like that. Mm -hmm. It has antioxidant properties and anti-inflammatory. So it really helps people with arthritis, people with high blood pressure. Mm. Ginger and garlic have been shown mm. to bring down the blood pressure. Mm. Even inflama inflammation, mm -hmm. they do help in digestion. It helps in gut health yeah. and emptying the bowel. Okay. Then um, uh, ginger, also for the good taste. Yeah. Ginger, garlic. Ginger, garlic. Yeah, all the kitchens yeah. use something like that. They love. Yes. They love that. Yes. Yes. Oh, interesting. Yeah. yeah. So, um, when you make them, yeah. how do they do, do? they need something added on to, for them to last long? When we make the paste, yeah. it's sterilized. Mm -hmm. so when you get the paste, it can stay in your fridge for up to three months. Up to three months. Yes, that's okay. the shelf life yes. for the ginger. As mm -hmm. long as it's in the fridge, then, then three it's months. Okay. If mm -hmm. it's not in the fridge, it's going to stay for only three days. Wow. Yes, okay. yes. So if you yeah. get our paste, it has yeah. to go to the fridge. If it's in the freezer, it's mm -hmm. for six months. Okay. But with the turmeric, turmeric itself is a preservative. Yeah. So it can go a bit longer. So that's why I think it's... It sells more as well. Yes, mm. but now with how good they are, yeah, it won't last three months. Yeah. yeah. Wow. <laughs> so how long have you been in business? We've been in business for six months. Six months. This is our sixth month. Wow. How has it been? Um, it's a journey. <laughs> I'd say it's a journey. Yeah. Yes, we mm. have good months, slow months, yeah. but mm. okay. 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 Yeah. So you're ready for me to meet your other partner? Yes, but yes. before that, yes. I want to show you yeah. how you can use. I'm going to use the uh, the ginger paste yes. to make dawa. Dawa. Yes. I love dawa actually. So this is ginger, plain mm -hmm. ginger. Mm -hmm. I can use plain ginger or ginger turmeric. Which one okay. do you prefer? Plain ginger. Plain ginger. I'm going to use just a wee bit of that mm -hmm. and some honey. Yeah. To sweeten, if you like it, sweeten. Yeah. If you don't like it, I like so sweet sweeten. Just yeah, just so we're going to make, and my water is ready. Okay. Yeah. Mm, just that. When you're tired, uh -huh. after work, when you have the flu, yeah, just a scoop. Oh, nice. Yeah, okay. and also it's very mm -hmm. good for nausea, especially Ooh. for the expectant mothers. Yeah, ginger. Studies have really shown it does help. Wow, I love ginger as I love to sing a lot. So I I love to put to have water with warm water with ginger, but it is so much work to crush it. Yeah, so. yeah. So we saw a gap. Yeah, and we did for you. Interesting. If you want pilau, just scoop. Yeah. Make your pilau, eat, go to bed. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. You can have time to do 
other stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. So now I'm mm-hmm. going to take you to meet my other partner. Yes. She does the um, the business the side. not dirty job. <laughs> <laughs> the business. We always marketing. have those two yeah. correlating. Okay. Let's go meet her. Right, let's go meet her. Yeah. She's Mary, she'll walk you through oh, our journey. Hi, Mary, how are you? hi, nice to meet you. Pleasure to meet you too. Karibu to Tanu's Kitchen. Yes. Uh, you enjoyed our that one? I loved it. I good, loved good. it. So let me go and hear more about the business, the nitty gritties, how you started, so that uh, we get to see where you guys are going in the near future. Karibu sana. Asante sana. Asante sana. Okay, thank okay. you. Let's go. After you. So thank you so much for giving us an opportunity to come and speak about Tanu's Kitchen, um, the things that you've been doing. We've been seeing a lot of products online, some very unique products. Um, How did this idea of um, making paste come up? Um, Is this what you do every single day? No, 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 it's not what I do every single day. I can uh, call it my my baby, but um, it started during COVID when now uh, everything went on lockdown so um my full-time job is uh, i'm a teacher i teach so during lockdown there was no activity going on so there was a lot of um free time but um why i thought of doing this was um i realized i like cooking a lot but um the hassle and the stress of uh, every day you want to put some spice in your food you have to peel the ginger you have to peel the garlic you have to peel the turmeric so it's sometimes it's a hassle so i asked myself why can't i not um, just make it and store so i made one then a friend came and visited me so as we are talking as i'm trying to fix her something then she to tells me, I, 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 I want one of this. Mm, one of the pests. Yes, one of the pests. Yeah. What was it? Which one was it? The one that I had then yeah. was um, I had made some ginger, some garlic, some leeks, and then some um, some onions. So it's 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 a cooking paste. It's actually very good for making stews and even making some marinades for your for your food. So I gave her and she went with it. So she told me, why can't you actually make this and I'll buy because I also don't want to get, um, okay. yes, the, yeah. uh, you come home, you're late, you sat in traffic. Then, especially for us ladies, sometimes you've done your, your manicure yes, and then yeah. after you peel the turmeric, your hands are left <laughs> yellow. So yeah. I said, why not? So that's how it started. Yeah. In fact, yes. what I really hear about cooking is like. Um, smelling oh, yes. the tungus, like yes, the smell of and ginger, and yeah, garlic on is your, very on your, strong. <laughs> on, yes. your, on your hands, okay. Yes, yes. So that's yes. where the idea was born. Yes. So you decided now, let's try and uh, make this paste to sell to yes to other people. To just my, I, I first started with my friends, yeah. um, and the first time we made, I think we made ten, ten, pieces. ten pieces. Of each. No, of ten, ten pieces of all. Yeah. Of all. And then of, of the first people who bought from me were my friends. Mm. So I, I sold, so I realized, okay, I can actually do this. So now um, I opened a Facebook page. I started posting, I started advertising. Mm. So now people started seeing and orders started. Coming. I've even sold to people in Nakuru. I've sold to people in Meru. Mm. Some I've even never met. And they, I think everybody who has bought from us has bought a second and a third time, mm. yes. So it's something that just came up and it's growing really, yes. really well. Yes. Okay, so did you have any background on this or how did you start making the paste? Um, I think when you're a foodie, when you love food, flavor is um, something very key. And when you're looking at having flavor and uh, going the way that we are now, you want something organic, you want something natural, and ginger, garlic, and turmeric, they are, it's like a base for any meal. So you try and uh, do the ratios and see how it works because there are those who will tell you, I don't like a lot of ginger. So you can, if you're making theirs, you tend to reduce a little bit. Or maybe I don't like a lot of garlic, but I want just a teeny tiny, so you put you put that, then eventually you find you have a good working working formula for the product. And then now with that, yeah. um, Tanu's Kitchen, um, when it was founded, 
Um, we are lucky to have somebody who has background in food. Mm -hmm. So we have um, our other partner or my other partner. She's a food nutritionist. So she, she's able to advise on uh, the importance, on the value, on the nutrients that we are getting, and even on the ratios on how to mix our products and make sure that we have a good product. Okay. Yes. So, the, so did you start with the partner from the beginning or how did it come by? Uh, when I, th when I th thought of it, but I, um, then I ran the idea by her and then she was okay, so now we teamed up. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. So you teamed up and started it. Yes. What has been your crazy challenges um, during that, uh, this Trizex era period? Um, the challenge is basically um, selling your product in the market. Being a new product, there are those who don't um, know what it is. There are those who will say, I still prefer doing it myself. And also the issue of capital. Because being a startup company, when you want to do a lot of advertising, you're not able to do that because constraints of having some some finances yeah. yes so capital was a serious yes serious and it, it, it still is because yeah. we are what we would want for us is we'd want to roll out our product and do mass production yeah. our plan for this year is uh we want to um, get support from kirdi kirdi is kenya uh, industrial research and development institute it's a government institute that offers support and even training for small or startup businesses where like if you don't have a manufacturing plant you can visit them and then they can also train you because I know like for, for, for us who are in the food business they have food scientists who can guide you in further developing your product so that now we are able to do mass production we would like um, our product to get to the every part of the country where if anybody wants something to add to their food they will think of at a news kitchen product. Okay, so you're looking at um, going to mass production. Um, that what is stopping you is definitely probably the capital and stuff. Yeah. If an investor came right now, how much do you think you'd need for capital? For capital right now, um, to be able to start small, at least we'll need 1.5 million. Yes. To take you to the next level. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yes. How many products are you selling per month? So currently we are able to do around 200 um, pieces, mm. yes, per month. 200 pieces per month? Yes. Okay. yes. So you have capacity to do more than that if given yes. an opportunity? Given an opportunity and yeah. given the finances, we would be able to, to, to push it further yeah. and increase our capacity. Okay. Yes. Um, what else would have been the challenges apart from now the capital um, in the manufacturing sector in Kenya, which is still not growing as it should be, mm -hmm. what do you think are the major challenges in that sector? Um, sometimes maybe access, getting raw materials, um, because like um, if you look at um, garlic, most of the garlic we have is imported from China. And the locally available one is almost two times the price of what, we, of what China sends to us. Mm. So it's a challenge. Uh, getting readily accessible material even for the ginger sometimes when you go to because we, we source our products from the local markets they will tell you this ginger is from Uganda for example we don't have it available in um, in, in Kenya and that sometimes affects the prices because the prices tend to fluctuate and dealing with a food product you can't keep on changing the prices every other time so that is a challenge because it means we absorb the cost and not push it to the to the cl to, to the customer yes oh, that's so interesting that we have garlic and ginger that you use is not from kenya i thought garlic is readily available in our um when you talk to the farmers yeah. for them they say that um, sometimes the garlic that we have here takes um, more time to mature and then the buds, the, the, the buds, yes, are, are somehow they're very small. So when they go to sell to the market, they do not fetch as much as what we get from, from China. Yes, yes. But we would want, if, as we grow, we would want to plant the, 
our own garlic because sometimes that way we are a hundred percent guaranteed of what is going into our product. What are the lessons you've learned that you'd want to give someone who is thinking of entering into manufacturing, has an idea that they haven't, you see you, you've started, you're just growing it. What could be the question that you'd like to give someone who's interested in entering into the manufacturing industry? The, my advice would be just start. No matter how small, just start. I remember when I started, my packaging was um, very, I didn't even have a brand. I started with a clear jar. So just start, no matter how small. One step is, a, is better than no step at all. So just start, learn. Failing is part of it, because sometimes um, there are some months when there's no, the demand goes down. So it is part of the process, but just start. Challenges will be there, just start, yes. All right, thank you so much. Oh, okay, thank you. That sounds like a very brilliant business. Um, just, uh, it's a typical story of an entrepreneur. You have a need yourself, you have a problem, uh, you know, so you find a solution, then other people come and see that solution and then you realize the problem exists on a wider scale. And, uh, and so you just keep finding ways of, you know, meeting that need on a wider and wider scale. So it sounds like, sounds like something that there's, there's big demand and need for. Uh, especially nowadays with the fact that uh, you have very busy families and they're just looking for quick ways of making a meal or maybe uh, it's uh, restaurants and they're also uh, trying to save time so they don't have to do all the grinding and pounding and they can just get something fresh. So it sounds like something that can you know have really huge demand. Um, so what I would get them doing is probably trying to figure out how big that demand is and they can do that by testing as wide as possible, testing with restaurants, testing with, uh, with households and doing a lot of advertising widely just to see what that kind of demand is. Um, I would advise though, and uh, usually it happens in, in, in manufacturing, that maybe they put a plan to grow uh, gradually uh, so that they're able to perfect their manufacturing processes and you know, maintain quality. Otherwise, if they grow too fast, it's, uh, it might end up being a challenge to keep uh, the quality standards. And also there are other things that usually happen. Sometimes you run out of raw materials in certain seasons and that kind of stuff, and you have customers waiting for, for your products. So it's, you need time to be able to smooth out all those cycles of when you have, you know, sometimes you can have an abundance of garlic and it's cheap, and then at other times it's rare and you need to import. So I was with somebody who's in the agricultural business about two or three weeks ago, and you're selling me that's one of the products which if you're able to grow on a large scale right now, there is more demand uh, than there is supply, and it's very interesting. A lot of the demand actually comes from northeastern Kenya and Somalia. So, uh, so yes, I, I would understand why they would have to do that. We are not producing enough. Yeah, yeah. And what they're mm. saying is that they they wanted something standard, as you had said. Mm. The fluctuations are a bit part of business, so mm. they're using their, their own methods. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So no, later they said that they would like to grow the product themselves, mm -hmm. and then they have to transform it to. Mm. Yeah. To fork. To fork. Yeah. 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 I, I, it's one model. Uh, that is a model where, you know, you end up. It's called vertical integration, where you more or less cover from the beginning to the end of your value chain. Um, there are industries where it works very well. There are other industries uh, where you're better off maybe outside outsourcing the different bits and pieces. Uh, to different people so that you know everyone can focus on their bit uh, but you know they can try both and see which one ends up working very well for them. If they are looking for investment um, then there are several things to consider. One, can they get an investor who can add more than just money because uh, sometimes money alone doesn't solve the problem that they are looking for. Maybe they'll be, they should be looking for people who understand their industry or maybe a bigger company that is maybe almost in a similar industry and that can invest in them and help them to grow. Um, uh, and it can also be different investors that bring in different things. Some people can bring in the whole aspect of distribution, others can bring in the aspect of production um, and in between. 
so they really need to think carefully. Uh, the amount you mentioned is very small. Um, a lot of investors want to hear scale, yeah. large scale. So maybe they need to think about their business on a very large scale. Um, in, in Africa, building a business that serves only one market sometimes can be too small to interest investors. So maybe they need to think about the whole of Africa. Uh, how can they build a brand that is able to grow throughout the whole of Africa? Markets like West Africa are very prone to using spices for cooking, uh, Middle East as well. So they probably need to think a lot broader uh, because the amount they're looking for is, is, is relatively small. I also doubt it's enough yeah. to help so. them get to where it is that they want to go. Yeah. So the good thing about get, if you are able to secure a good investor and a good amount of money, then you should be able to, you know, scale up quickly. Uh, but I, d I don't know, they might, you know, face a challenge of whether they can uh, keep finding enough raw materials to keep up the kind of uh, production that they're looking at. Mm -hmm. But for me, it definitely sounds like an investable business. You just need to do very good homework on, you know, how big is the market and how can they go about serving that particular market. Uh, it sounds like they would have to think about exporting to West Africa, South and North Africa, maybe even beyond that, uh, so that they can borrow maybe 50 million shillings and then put up a good plant, source good uh, products, go all out and advertise well and, uh, you know, get some good uh, um, distribu distributors in different markets and then be able to grow beyond that. However, that uh, brings in a challenge because I remember you mentioned that they do very fresh products. So fresh products cannot be transported too far before they start going bad. Mm -hmm. So they may have to think of a way of uh, preserving it in, in a way that it doesn't lose its freshness. So maybe it's using natural preservatives or organic preservatives and you know that kind of thing that increases the shelf life. Uh, I think you typically need a shelf life of nine months and beyond mm -hmm. if you're going to get into the export space so that when stuff is, stays in, a, um, in, in storage, it doesn't go bad, mm -hmm. yeah.